Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for free premium sports picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk about a subject we don't talk about enough here online. Right? It's uh, social class, fighters' backgrounds, and the sport of boxing. Right? Now, you've heard me here online say there's no money in boxing. What I mean by that is that most guys in boxing are not going to make enough to feed their families. Right? The guys who do make enough to feed their families, because of the lack of structure, right? Everyone really is an independent contractor. There's no sports league. There isn't the kind of union you get in other sports, right? There's no Major League Baseball Players Association or National Football League Players Association or National Basketball Associ uh, Players Association, right? There are no union leaders out there who can literally negotiate on your behalf pension benefits that'll take care of you in your later years. Also, the guys in boxing, many of them, come from very tough backgrounds, right? The money, the contract language, the people around them, it can be overwhelming. They might not fully appreciate or understand the financial part of the game. This is a recurring theme in boxing at the highest levels. There's a article here online. We're now in the internet age. Right? You can research what I'm saying on a much more extensive, much more in-depth level. Right? There's a great article here online. I believe it's with BoxingScene.com where they interview Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Right now, Chavez Jr., at the time, he might still be, was in the process of negotiating a new contract with his promoter. And Chavez Jr. talked about his father, Julio Cesar Chavez. Now, keep in mind, this is one of the great fighters in history. But yet Chavez Jr. pointed out that his father wasn't treated well by the sport financially. Right? Think about it. This guy's a cultural icon. This guy had major success in the ring. Right? He didn't have a loss on his record for dozens of fights. He fought in numerous big matches. The Meldrick Taylor match the Pernell Whitaker match, the Oscar De La Hoya match, right? Countless other matches. But yet his son, someone close to Chavez Sr., did not feel that his father was treated well financially. Well, let's talk about Matthew Saad Muhammad. This gets my goat. Matthew Saad Muhammad, when I was growing up, was one of my favorite fighters. Right? If you were a child of the late 1970s, early 1980s, like I was, this was one of those boxers who really belonged on the big screen. He was the light heavyweight champion of the world. His fights were all action. You want a great fight? 
you can pick from several Matthew Saad Muhammad fights. His 1980 fight against Yaki Lopez was deemed the fight of the year. Right, His earlier fight against Marvin Johnson in 77 was also a great fight. This guy threw a lot of punches. This guy got hit with a lot of punches. Right? This guy had a chin. This guy represented Philadelphia. Keep in mind, I'm talking about a guy who was inducted in the International Boxing Hall of Fame more than a year ago. When you think about great fight towns in the United States, Philadelphia is on the very short list. Right? Understand, Philly is the home or the adopted home of some of the giants in the sports history. Right? Jolton Jeff Chandler, Sonny Liston, Joe Fraser. An argument can be made that Carlos Monzo, the great Argentinian middleweight champion, was never more tested than he was by Philadelphia's Benny Briscoe. Right? Of course, today, Bernard Hopkins is from Philly, right? The tradition continues. But understand, on the Mount Rushmore of Philadelphia boxing is Matthew Saad Muhammad. He defended his title eight times. Back before all this cable television and HBO and Showtime, Right, Matthew Saad Muhammad used to be on network television. I know because I was one of the young kids who idolized him. Right, who circled dates on their TV guide. Saying, wow, Saad Muhammad's going to fight. I've got to stop whatever I'm doing to be there. Right, great fighter. Saad, you... Matthew Saad Muhammad died the other day. He had battled homelessness toward the end of his life. Right now, let me just say, understand, in life, older people know this. When you're young, you have an entourage. Right? You have a crew you run with. Right? A lot of guys. I remember hitting parties with, seriously, like eight, nine guys. Right? Without thinking about it. Right? You hang with a crew. You have good friends. In your 20s, you think that this inner circle is going to be your inner circle forever. It's not the way life works, right? As you get older, for whatever reason, right? The decisions of some of your friends, your own decisions, your inner circle is going to shrink. You're going to lose touch with some people, right? To any boxer watching this video, I want you to look around the room, right? Understand. You might have a great team in place right now. You might have a great promoter. You might have a great manager, great friends, great support system. I'm sure Matthew Saad Muhammad did in the late 70s and early 80s. Right? He made, according to the New York Times, at least $4 million in his career. Right? But... Right? Just understand that as you get older, that team is going to whittle away. You still have to live your life. Right? You can't rely on, quite frankly, anyone other than yourself. The professionals around you, accountants, lawyers, you have to realize you're the principal, they're just your agents. You have to supervise what they are doing. 
the dollars in your bank account you need to figure out where they are going let me point out too in the press they'll tell you this guy made four million dollars in his career did he bring home the four million dollars after the promoter got a cut the manager got a cut the sparring partners got a cut you know understand these guys have to pay out so much money did I mention the government the tax man got a cut they have to pay out so much money that you can't look at their purse and say yes this guy got a purse of four million dollars because the take home is going to be a small fraction of that. Right? And if you're a boxer from a tough background, right, you might not have known both of your parents. You might have been raised in a neighborhood where you never met or heard of an accountant. Right? Nobody in your neighborhood has a lawyer other than a public defender right you think that if you make it to TV you've made it right if you can qualify for the mortgage in the great part of town then you think you're balling until of course the next month when you actually have to start paying down that mortgage right let's talk about health too you see these fighters you know as a fan let me do a mea culpa here. One of the reasons why I loved watching Matthew Saad Muhammad is because his fights were all action. He was doling out punishment and he was getting hit. Right? At times it almost looked like a street fight. That 1980 fight of the year, Lopez hits him with something like 70 unanswered punches. Right? I've put the video of that fight up in my favorites here on YouTube. Please watch it. It's the eighth round. Right? Fans love the violence. I plead guilty myself. But fighters need to realize that they can't make the fans happy. You have to learn defense you have to right if you want to have a high quality of life after you leave the sport you need to learn ways to keep your health during your career fans love all action little defense fighters your quality of life doesn't Matthew Saad Muhammad was diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease, ALS. Now we're finding out, given the higher levels of ALS in sports that are concussion prone, like pro football here in the United States, we're finding out that head trauma contributes to ALS. Right before, we didn't know the cause. Now we know that head trauma can contribute to ALS, right? Here's the problem. That big entourage that was hanging around Matthew Saad Muhammad in the late 70s, early 80s, when he was the light heavyweight champion, you think all of those folks were around when Matthew Saad Muhammad was diagnosed with ALS? You think all of those folks were around when Matthew Saad Muhammad was homeless? Let me point out too, knowing people with money is not the same as having access to money, right? Some of the people Matthew Saad Muhammad fought are some of the biggest names in boxing today, right? That doesn't mean that Matthew Saad Muhammad could call them up and say, hey, I'm homeless, give me some money right just knowing wealthy people doesn't mean you have access to their wealth understand too in many cases the appearance of wealth is an illusion right I'm sure there are many of you who make a lot of money who are watching this video who know that you spend a lot of money 
paying that mortgage, paying for your kids' private school education, paying for that first wife's spousal support, paying for that weekend in Tahoe's child support payment, right? So let me say, when you look at Matthew Saad Muhammad, when you look at his story, understand the financial trouble in boxing is structural, right? Don't look at the story as someone who squandered $4 million. Rather, look at the sport as a sport that, quite frankly, doesn't have enough structure for fighters coming from the hood to actually get money and then hold on to what they have, right? Let's go back to the great fighters in Philly's history, some of them who I mentioned earlier in this video. Sonny Liston, right, heavyweight champ. He's the champ who beat Floyd Patterson twice, right, who then lost to Ali twice. Understand, shortly before his death, and his death is a whole other story. I encourage everyone to look up Sonny Liston's death here online. But shortly before his death, think about it. This former heavyweight champion was apparently a collector for a loan sharking business, according to some reports. Right? Think about it. Right? Sonny Liston was hoping to reignite his career. Liston wasn't financially set at the time of his death. He wasn't. Let's talk about Benny Briscoe. It might shock some people, but did you know throughout Benny Briscoe's career he was a sanitation worker for the city of Philadelphia? He kept his job. He needed his job. As good as Briscoe was, and keep in mind this is one of the best fighters in Philadelphia's history. As good as Briscoe was, he needed the salary and benefits that he got from his daytime job. Boxing was a hobby, right? This is a guy who was an elite middleweight for years, right? He needed a regular job. Let's talk about Joe Fraser. Think about it. Not one, not two, but three fights with Muhammad Ali. Understand, Fraser was an Olympic medalist. Keep in mind, too, he didn't have one fight with Foreman. He had two fights with Foreman. Keep in mind, there are other big fights he had. He fought light heavyweight champion Bob Foster. Did you know that in his 60s, Fraser needed some medical attention? Right? If you want to see an underinsured group, in America, look at boxers, right? Fraser needed operations. Did you know that Larry Holmes, the Eastern assassin, another heavyweight champion, quietly paid for the operations, right? Fraser was having financial trouble, right? If you dig deep here online, you're gonna see that Fraser's daughter was a lawyer who, of course, was helping her father recover from losing millions of dollars in deals involving business partners. Now, keep in mind the sacrifice that Fraser made physically. He was blind in one eye. We know that now. He was blind in one eye from boxing. Right? So Fraser, in his 60s, wasn't flush with money, right? He, too, is one of the legends in Philly. We need to ask ourselves, why are so many legends in the sport? Just in Philly alone, Sonny Liston, Benny Briscoe, 
Joe Fraser, Matthew Saad Muhammad. Why are so many of them, after great careers, falling on financial hard times? Right? You know, it's really something that needs to be looked at. I understand much of the responsibility falls on the boxer, but if you know you have a structural problem here, then I feel that young fighters need to watch videos like this to know exactly what they're getting into. I love the sport of boxing. But if Julio Cesar Chavez and Joe Fraser had financial problems, right? If Matthew Saad Muhammad, a Hall of Famer, was homeless and then ended up with ALS, given the amount of money the top end of the sport generates, given the fact that the sport has sanctioning bodies, given the fact that these TV outfits are paying millions of dollars for broadcast rights for fights. Given that at the high end, some of these high end events seem to be focused on particular cities, Las Vegas, now Macau, China, Atlantic City, right? It almost seems to me that we need legislation and I'm not a, <laughs> trust me, I'm not a regulation type. But it seems to me that we at least need disclosure of what's happening to fighters. Right? And we need some kind of warning to boxers. They really need to, before big fights in certain cities, have to go through some kind of presentation where people talk about what's happened to some of the greats. Not just the financial risks, which are huge, but the health risks, right? As well as the fighters' legal rights. I don't think the Muhammad Ali Act goes far enough. I can tell you that giving fighters spreadsheets and stuff like that to many of these fighters, it's all going to look like French to them, right? They're not going to know, right? I appreciate the great legislative intent of many of these bills and stuff like that, but I do feel that these fighters need a little bit more, and it should be the kind of thing where a young Matthew Saad Muhammad learns early on not to make certain mistakes, or at least about the risks that he's taking, right? These fighters are licensed by the state. Part of the licensing protocol should be that the fighter, you know, sit down and look at a commission approved presentation on the financial and health risks of the sport. Let me hear from you. It's a sad day for me to know that Matthew Saad Muhammad is no longer with us. It's an even sadder day to realize how alone he was at the end. Let me tell you, when Matthew Saad Muhammad was riding high, he wanted to find his family, right? Matthew Saad Muhammad was literally abandoned by his family. He had an older brother he was staying with, some family member who sent the two of them out, this is according to the New York Times, and told the older brother, hey, leave your brother in the city right he was then found in the city he was raised in part by nuns not kidding right he was given the name Matthew Franklin because of course he was found by the Franklin Highway or some street named Franklin well when Matthew Saad Muhammad became who he was he offered $10,000 to anyone who could connect him to his original family, right? A family member contacted him, 
So he then goes to meet his family. And of course, when he showed up, all that family member wanted from him was the $10,000, right? Matthew Saad Muhammad was man enough to actually openly talk about his disappointment at that. That's who he was. The guy was a giant of a man. And for him to have it end this way is tragic. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. All I can say is we're all accomplices in this. Right? I love the sport of boxing. No question about it. But understand a lot of the fighters who have very entertaining, crowd-friendly styles. Fighters who take a lot of punishment and dish out a lot of punishment. In a sport where we colorfully call concussions. Fighters being knocked unconscious. Knockouts. Right? Just understand that many of these fighters are going to have slurred speech, are going to have financial problems, and are going to have health problems after their career. Understand, too, that many of the fighters getting these multi-million dollar checks right now are not really getting the multi-million dollar checks. Their promoters and managers are. Right? And these fighters, based on their own tax burdens, right and based on their own dreams right the desire to own find things that depreciate in value right that luxury car right a lot of these fighters are going to overspend end up broke Matthew Saad Muhammad had to declare bankruptcy years ago this is years before he ends up homeless let me hear from you leave your comments for me here online Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.